Welcome back to another edition of Myth Badger Videos. In this video, we're going to revisit the vector website and look at making a specific icon for ourselves. In this case, we're going to design a gear. Now, vector.com does include some pre-made shapes, and a gear icon happens to be one of the shapes that you can use. However, it is very set in its design, so if you want less spokes or more spokes, if you want to change the shape of the spokes or the size of the hole in the center, you're kind of stuck with what it provides with you. And a gear provides a great way to look at a couple of features. So we're going to go ahead and make our own, and let's get rid of that one first. In making any kind of design, it's helpful to understand that you can actually change the dimension units that's used on a site. So if we come up here to the file settings, you can see that I can switch between feet, inches, millimeters, centimeters, points, and pixels. Pixels is the preferred method when dealing with any form of scalable vector graphics or SVG files because it helps to correlate to the amount of pixels on the screen that are going to be taken up. It's a little bit more common terminology used when doing website design. However, to make sense for what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to inches so we're using a common unit of measure here. Our dimensions are going to be visible down here at the bottom, and we're going to be revisiting that several times in this video, so make sure we're paying attention to that as well. The other thing that's important to understand is we have some zoom settings here, and the default setting often sits somewhere between 100 and 150. I seem to find 137% is pretty common when I come into Vector, but you're going to want to be able to zoom your view at different points, so remember that zooming down here is a very easy way to adjust that view. I'm going to go ahead and start by picking the ellipse tool and just clicking roughly in the center to make a circle. I want this to be a bit bigger because my current dimensions are a little under half an inch. So I'm going to turn around and change this value. You'll notice that in the center is this gear icon. If I wanted to maintain a circle, I'm going to leave that, uh, that I don't know why I said gear, that chain link there, because what it means is it's correlating the two dimensions. If I change one, the other is going to change in order to maintain itself. And I have no idea why that gear randomly just popped back up in my view. That's kind of funny. I'm going to click here and I'm going to change this to be two inches just to give myself a larger gear to work with and I'm going to reposition this in the center. Now in making my gear I'm going to need to make the piece that's the spokes that are going to cut into the gear. I can use a curved um, a gear spoke if I want to kind of go for more of a sprocket look but we want to make a bit of a gear look so I'm going to use a combination of boxes. I'm going to go ahead and click on my rectangle tool and just create a box. And then I'm going to do it again. And then I'm going to do it again. Actually, let's get rid of that last one. I'll show you a technique here. I'm going to take this second one and I'm going to click on it once and that brings up my properties. And I'm going to come down here to my rotation setting in the bottom right and I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. When I do this, I've got it set at an angle. And the reason why is I'm going to bring it down here and what I want to do is I want to line up the two corners about like this. And you see I've got those two guidelines, a horizontal and vertical guideline there. And when I see both of them, I'm going to let go. I'm going to right click on this red one and duplicate it. And I'm going to come back down here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom to kind of make this shape. I'm going to go ahead and select the whole thing. And then use the Unite or Add to make that shape. You know what, I'm thinking, I don't know if this is going to cut in as far as I want, so I'm going to go ahead and make one more square, and I'm going to position it about right here to fill in this gap a little bit. I'm just going to set it about there so it's lined up and centered, and let's go ahead and unite that. And I'm making this shape. What I want is I want this kind of hexagonal edge over here. The rest of it's unnecessary. It's going to stick out in the end. Okay, now that I have this, I line it up here and I realize this is rather large for what I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce its size. We see that its size, its height is about 1.01 inches and its width is about 0.71. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce the height here. Let's go with 0.75. And that seems to make it a bit smaller and I think more manageable for what I'm going to do. Okay, that seems to be a good size here. Now we need to line this all up. I'm going to take this piece here, and as I come down, I'm going to find the guideline that tells me the centers are lined up. There it is. And then I'm going to bring it over. Now this would put the edge of both of them together, but that's not quite what I want to do. I want it to cut in. So I'm going to come over here, 
until I find roughly a midpoint and maybe go just a little bit past that midpoint. I want the these two edges right here, these two corners to kind of line up with the edge. So I'm just going to put it as close as I can without cutting in. And if I zoom in here, yep, I don't want to cut too far in because it'll leave a little uh, piece here. So that's close enough for what I'm going to do. That seems to work. I'm going to zoom out just slightly and let's go ahead and reposition my view here. And what I want to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to click on it once and duplicate the object. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees to flip it around. And then I'm going to bring it all the way over on the exact opposite side. And I'm going to line it up about what I did there. I'm going to do the best I can to line it up. It's not going to be perfect, but I'm going to try my best. And we see that I, at least horizontally, it's lined up about where I want it. I'm going to go ahead and click there, and I've got those two set, which is great because now the rest of it's going to look rather simple. I'm going to hold down my Shift key, and holding down Shift allows me to click on two different pieces, and you see a bounding box that goes around them. That's what we want. We want only those two selected because what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click and duplicate them again. Now I have four of them. I'm going to very carefully drag these over and reposition them right on top. And if you look here, I have them horizontally lined up, but you can tell by the points, the top and bottom, that they're not vertically lined up. And if I move them into positions that are vertically lined up, it actually completes the box all the way around in that blue line. Now that they're lined up perfectly and they're centered on my main circle and they're lined up with each other, I'm going to go ahead and change the rotation. And let's go ahead and change this to 45 degrees. And you know what? I'm realizing that's not going to work quite for what I do. So let's do, let's change that again. I'm going to reselect my object here, one and two, and let's try changing that to about 60 degrees. There we go. That seems to actually work pretty good. So let's go ahead and use that, 60 degrees. I'm going to duplicate this one more time, and I'm going to reposition it right on top. And now let's duplicate again, 45 degrees. Nope, I said 60. Let's fix that. 60 degrees from there. And now I have this set up evenly spaced all the way around. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and I'm going to select the whole thing. And when I select the whole thing, I'm going to go ahead and use this subtract feature to cut out all those green shapes from my original circle. And now you see I've got this gear icon here. And it's a nice gear because the spokes that stick out are smaller than the gaps in there. So we know that they're kind of kind of interlocked. It's a nice looking gear, even if it's not really a perfect gear. You know what? A gear is often going to have a hole for an axle. So let's go ahead and get our ellipse. And looking at the guideline, there's a vertical one. I'm going to get close to the center. And when that line disappears, I'm going to click. And I can go ahead and just double check. Yep, right there seems to be the center. And I'm going to go ahead and select this and subtract. And now I have an, a hole for the axle as well. In review, we used a combination of simple shapes like squares and our dimension tools in order to make a more complex shape, which we could then cut out of a circle to make this gear icon. It's one of the reasons why I think Vector is a really powerful tool for what looks like a seemingly simple interface. Definitely powerful enough to explore its use as a graphic design tool. Hopefully you were able to follow along and make your own unique gear creation. Thank you for watching and feel free to hit that subscribe button to keep up with all of our content here at Myth Badger Videos.